was going to end this series, but I don't know if I'll ever end this series. One more. I just can't get away from the blood. It's a bloody message. Bloody message. I can't get away from it. I feel like I need to... I need to get right back to this one more time. We need to get this in our system. We need this working out somehow that we'll understand, you know, really what the blood is. It's a mystery that I want to open up. I want to, I want to share some things about the blood that you may never have heard before. And we're going to go a little bit deeper. Are you okay to go deep? Yes. Amen? How many are ready to go deep? Yes. All right. All right. All right. All right. Let's go to Genesis chapter 4 and let's read the story because there, there is a principle in, in, in the interpretation of scriptures that says that the, um, it's called the law of first mention. And whenever a subject is first mentioned in scripture, that's important because it usually sets the tone for the entire, you know, for all the scriptures. So this is the first mention of, of blood, as it were. And let's, let's look at this in verse 1 and read through it. You okay? you okay with some word? All right. Now Adam knew his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain and said, I have acquired a man from the Lord. Then she bore again, this time his brother Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. Okay. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of, and of their fat. And the Lord respected Abel and his offering. How many want God to respect your offering? But he did not respect Cain. Do, do you understand that you can worship and not be respected in it? Wow. Wow. And Cain was very angry. Come on, Cain. And his countenance fell. And it's something that God can tell just by looking at your face. <laughs> so the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? Why is your countenance fallen? Uh -huh. If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well... Sin lies at the door. The Hebrew there, it crouches at the door, ready to pounce. Come on. Sin is a way of attacking. And its desire is for you. But you should rule over it. Did you know you can rule over temptation? Now, now. Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and killed him. And it's something that he just had a conversation with God and still had it in him to kill his brother. Wow. So the Lord said to Cain, where is Abel, your brother? How many know God knows? How many know he wants God or wants Cain to confess? I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? Old victim mentality. And he said, what have you done? The voice, say the voice, of your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. So now you are cursed from the earth, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. Wow. Wow. When you till the ground, it shall no longer yield its strength to you. A fugitive and a vagabond, you shall be on the earth. And Cain said to the Lord, my punishment is greater than I can bear. Better than capital punishment. Surely you have driven me out this day from the face of the ground. Watch that. I shall be hidden from your face. I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond on the earth. And it will happen that anyone who finds me will kill me. 
And the Lord said to him, Therefore, whoever kills Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark on Cain, lest anyone finding him should kill him. One more time, let's pray. Jesus, touch this word, use it for your glory, and give us what we need in this hour. Let us go from here with baskets full. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Praise the Lord. How many know it reveals a lot about us how we worship? I mean, we don't always see it, but how many know God sees it? Some people say, and I guess I've said it, just, just worship any way you're comfortable. I'm not so sure that that's right. There is a way to worship God in spirit and in truth. There is a way to worship God, and there's a wrong way to worship God. And we, we need to be sure that we offer God the right sacrifice because Cain, because they both offered a sacrifice, but Cain offered a sacrifice from the field, but Abel from the flock. And apparently that made all the difference in the world. Cain's offering came from the field. It came from the ground. But didn't God curse the ground? Come on, Adam and Eve. He said that, you know, you're going to have to fight thorns and thistles and all. Isn't it interesting that Jesus died with a crown of thorns on his head? <laughs> he bore the cross. He bore the curse. So Cain, watch this. There's going to be a lot of little nuggets here, so don't fall asleep on me. Cain offered what God had stripped away from Adam. Oh, y'all going to get, y'all don't get that. When Adam sinned, he tried to cover himself up with fig leaves. <laughs> and fig leaves come from the, that was, you can't cover yourself with things from, from things that are cursed. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, because, see, Adam, Adam tried to hide behind a fig leaf. I hope it was adequate in size. But the problem with fig leaves is they dry out, they crumble, and they itch. Are you hearing me? You can't go find your salvation. You, you, you do not have the ability or the power to save yourself or to deliver yourself, to heal yourself, to find answers for yourself. It's time to understand that some worship is fleshly worship. Some worship will not cover you because you're drawing it in your own strength and power. If you're just worshiping God, just worshiping God in your emotions, I think you're out of line. You have to worship him in spirit and truth. He didn't say in soul. Now, I know emotions follow what happens, but the spirit needs to lead the way. Some worship is just nostalgia, but it needs to be in spirit and in truth. Wow. So Cain was trying to offer to God what God pulled off of Adam. But Abel offered to God what God clothed Adam with. Oh, <laughs> glory to God. Listen, I, I, don't know, I don't know what you believe about this, but I, I believe God, you know, God killed an animal, right? Don't know what it is. How many believe it was a sheep? He kills an animal and strips the hide off it and puts it on Adam. I believe the blood was still flowing. Adam, Adam gets this garment put on him, and he feels the blood on the inside of the coat. It's the first known 
fur coat. And animal rights people cannot be saved. No, no. <laughs> if God killed an animal, I think it's okay. If, okay. So can you imagine Adam standing there with his coat on and the blood dripping down his leg to his feet and understanding it wasn't just about the coat, it was about the blood. That unless blood is shed... There is no remission of sins. Unless blood is shed, there is no life to be given. Wow. So, so Adam had favor with God. I, I want you to give you this. I want you to catch this because favor doesn't. Some people say, well, God, God doesn't have favorites. Favor doesn't come to people. Favor comes because of principles. When you follow the principle, you get the favor. It's not about you. It's not about how good looking you are, how much money you have. It's not about what you've done, but it's about the principles you keep. Glory to God. You see, when, when Abel kept the principle of giving blood, God gave him favor. But when Cain would not do it God's way, favor was removed. Now, Cain, how many believe Cain could have learned a lesson? Can I tell you this too? When you have favor on your life, people will persecute you. They get jealous. A pastor gets blessed financially. Well, he's not supposed to have that much money. <laughs> I didn't steal it. <laughs> if I stole it, you might have something to say about that. <laughs> I'm living under favor. Anyone else living under favor? Don't hate me because of my favor. Don't judge me because of what God has blessed me with and the same thing listen listen with oh hallelujah listen when when you see someone else get blessed and you're wondering why ain't i blessed maybe you need to check out yourself maybe maybe cain should have learned the lesson of abel and offered the right sacrifice how many believe god would have forgave him but cain was jealous and there will be people that are jealous of you. I think it motivates the devil. He's jealous of all the blessings God's people get. Remember Job, how he talked, oh, yeah, yeah, I guess Job ought to be happy. You just treat him so well. He's, but see, if you, if, you, if you live with the right principles, then you have the favor of God. Cain didn't want to put the work in. He just brought a bushel of beans that he picked. And God says, no, it's not about, be it's about somebody, something has to die for me to impart life. Are you getting what I'm saying? Whew. Notice, notice what Cain said. Notice Cain said, Abel, come on over to the field. I want to talk to you. Does that sound like the devil? The devil's always trying to get you out of your atmosphere into his. The devil's always trying to get you out of God's protection and favor. Come on over and let's have a little conversation over here. Does that remind you of Jesus in the wilderness? The devil never tempted Jesus in heaven. But when he got Jesus in his field, he decided, maybe now I can make some progress. You need to be careful when the devil tries to get you in his field. Not that we're never tempted. Not that we're never there. But be aware, amen, that when, because... <laughs> 
Jesus went into the wilderness. That's where he was supposed to be. Sometimes we have to be in demonic territory. Sometimes we're going to be in a place of temptation. But you need to take the weapon Jesus took with him because Jesus took the word into the wilderness and he spoke the word and it overcame the power of the enemy. The enemy couldn't take him even though it was in his field. Wow. Is this helping anybody? Glory to God. Take the word with you. You know, at least with Cain, God was willing to counsel with him. He's like, let's have a session here. He did talk with him. I I believe God talks to sinners about their condition. Come on, church. People say, oh, God, no. Yeah, God, oh, yeah. How, How many know God was at work before you were saved? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He He's setting you up. For what's ahead. So so God's willing to have a little little counseling session. And he says, uh, uh, Cain, if you did good, uh, good things happen. And when you do wrong, bad things happen. Duh. Come on, Cain. And he said, Cain, you have to learn how to rule. Do you know the purpose of your salvation is not just a ticket to heaven, but the purpose of your salvation is to give you power over sin. You actually have power now. If if you've been saved one hour, God's given you power to overcome temptation. Yeah. It's not in you, in your flesh, but it's, but, it's, but it's God's given it to you. It's through his grace and through the blood of Jesus that you're able to overcome. You can rule over those things that want to hold you back. I'm not helping anybody this morning. Hallelujah. My God. You have to rule over it. And God's telling Cain, hate will backfire. When you hate people, it'll backfire. When you're jealous, it'll backfire. We need to learn from our learn from those who have favor. Instead of hating on them, learn from those who have favor, and maybe you can have favor as well. Is anybody following what I'm saying? Cain became a wanderer. Not a wanderer. Now, I realize when I type that out, that could be two different things. It's spelled the same, I guess, right? He wandered. It's interesting that when, when, when people begin to seek evil, when young people seek evil in their life, they want to leave home. Just get me a motorcycle, I'll travel across the country. Okay, Cain. I'm not saying it's wrong to ride motorcycles. Jesus, I've... I felt I felt knives and <laughs> hardly that. I'm just saying there's a mindset that, that all of a sudden you're like the prodigal son. You're detached from your roots and now you're wandering. You're, you're, you're not a farmer anymore. You're just wandering. You, you, you have no roots. You're, you're just out there, and, and there's no connection. That's what sin does. It makes you a wanderer instead of a wonder. Come on. Are you following what I'm saying? Okay. And the reason he wandered is because the ground wasn't working for him anymore. I got to teach a little bit this morning. Are you okay out there? The ground is now the ground was already cursed with Adam. But now it is double cursed. So it's one thing, you know, we're all going to have to deal with Adam's sin, but there's something else when we compound it with our own sin. Now the ground is really not working. And since the ground isn't working, I need to find some other way to live. And so, so I want you to understand. I want you to get this now because I'm going to come back to it. The ground wasn't working anymore. 
But then God says this, Cain, where's your brother? Oh, am I my brother's keeper? I don't know where he is. He knew where he was. And here's what God said. God didn't say, I saw you kill him. <laughs> I mean, I'm God. <laughs> no, he said, Abel's blood is crying out. His blood, wow, oh God. His blood, catch this now, his blood has a voice. And it's crying out. And God says, when the blood cries out, I have to act. I have to take action. Something has to be done when the blood cries out. Oh, y'all know where I'm going with this. When the blood cries out, then I ha I'm obligated. Why? Because the life is in the blood. I'm talking about life in the blood, but the blood is in the ground, and it's crying. It has a voice, and I have to act because of the blood. Go give him praise in the house. I have to act. Wow. Listen, the ground isn't working for Cain. But the ground is working for Abel. Abel's dead, but the ground's still working for him. And I want you to remember, we're made from the ground. Wow. <laughs> Watch this. The enemy may try to shut down your voice, but you have blood that will speak for you. The enemy might tear up your life, but you're covered in the blood of Jesus, and the blood will speak for you in that situation. You may be sick in body, but the blood is speaking from the ground. My God, you are ground. You're covered in blood. And, and whatever you're facing, whatever trial, whatever battle, whatever health uh, situation, financial situation, I'm here to tell you in the name of Jesus, the blood is talking to God for you. It has a voice. The blood has a voice. The blood has a voice. Let the blood do the talking. When Jesus died on the cross, the Bible said every last drop. We know because water began to come out. Every last. And people say, well, what happened to the blood? Duh. It went in the ground. No one's down there with a pot. This is all mine. <laughs> oh, I know some people that they'd be there with their pot. <laughs> it's like, let me catch it. Let me catch it. Let me catch. It. No, th the blood went in the, and I am ground. <laughs> Every last drop whew, went into the ground. When you're covered, when you sing, when you think about being covered in the blood of Jesus, understand that happened at Calvary when it went into the, which is cursed, but now covered. Rupo shataramatai. Hallelujah. Hebrews 12 and just one verse 24, watch this. To Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than that of Abel. The whole book of Hebrews is about better things. Better, everything's better. Everything's better. Everything, everything's better. How many know the blood that Jesus spilled is better than the bull? The, the, blah, 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 blah. Fill in the blank. Better than the blood of goats and oxen and sheep and pigeons. Amen. And all that had to be done over and over and over and over. But his blood shed one time. It's better. It's better. It's better. It speaks of better things. The blood of Jesus. Better things. Say better things. Wow. 
Wow, you've been so good. This is going to be a short message. He said, we're good every Sunday. Genesis chapter 4, let's pick up the story, verse 25. And Adam knew his wife again. You know, I wonder about that. Did he not know her for all those years? Adam needed some better training. I don't know what. By the way, by the way, when it says when it says he she conceived, right? And brought forth Cain and bore Cain. And then it said, and she bore. It didn't say she was she conceived again. It's possible they were twins. Now we don't know that, but isn't that the same kind of story as Jacob and Esau? And there's another, I forget their names right now, but there's another set of twins, and, and, the, and the, the, the second son overtook the first. You could talk about the prodigal son, the second son. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, that, that'll preach all day long. So Adam knew his wife again. Good for you, Adam. And she bore a son and named him for God has appointed Another seed. It's all about the seed. It's all about, why was this so important? Because God promised Eve. God promised Eve. Oh, come on, church. Come on, stay with me for five more minutes. Interpretation. Ten more minutes. Oh, Jesus, help us. Watch this. God promised Eve that her seed would stomp on the head of the serpent. But now one of her seed is dead and the other seed is cursed and it doesn't look like what God promised is going to happen. But God sent another seed. Whatever God promises you, he will do if he has to send another seed. It's all about the seed, the seed, the seed. That's why Jewish women were, were just heartbroken. I mean, I mean, they were devastated when they didn't have any sons because that meant the seed's not coming through me. That's why Mary was shocked. Me? Yes, Finally. After all these centuries, Mary, the seed comes through you, and now the seed is in us. Yes. One man said, God doesn't clone Christians. He sows them. Yes. Watch this about the seed. Watch this. When God said, let the earth bring forth, let the earth bring forth the, the, the vegetation, right? He spoke to the earth. Let the earth bring forth. There it comes. And, and then he said, and then he said, let the waters abound. Waters produced fish that came out of the water. They live in the and then he said, let the birds fly in the, uh-huh. So birds live in the air. Animals live off the ground. Vegetation comes up out of the ground because that's what they were made from. <laughs> but then on the sixth day, God said, let us make man. Let us make, oh, you missed it. You missed a place to shout. He said, let us, not the ground, not the water, not the air, let us, let us, capital U-S, let us make man in our image. The fish lives only in its environment of water. Animals must live in an environment. Vegetables must have a certain thing from the ground. Well, if we're made from God, we can only live in the presence 
of the one who made us. Go away now. That's why people that are not Christian are not saved are still under a curse. Stop it. We get rid of this thing. It keeps talking to me. We're made in his image. So the atmosphere we live in must be the atmosphere of heaven. You've never lived until you've lived in his presence. My God, that's good. Can't wait to hear what I say next. This is... Take a fish out of water, it dies. Put an animal in the water. <laughs> Throw a cat in the air, it f- falls. But we live in a spiritual atmosphere. Wow. So many times we wonder why things are not going as well as we think they should. And, And I don't know, is there anyone here that has never gone through any tragedy? Some of you are in it right now. Oh, my God. The pain that this life, you know, and it's because of the curse. The ground is cursed. But all the blood, Leviticus 17, 11, life is in. It's not just the blood, but the life. Life is in the blood. So when the blood poured out of Jesus' heart, it went into the cursed ground, and life went into death. And now, whenever things are going wrong and things are really going rough and we're feeling it and it's, it's a horrible place, Here's what happens. The father is seated on the throne and he says, what's that I hear? It's not necessarily your prayer. He's hearing the voice of the blood of Jesus. You pray and he says, okay, that's why we pray in the, in the name of Jesus because of the blood. So the blood cries out from the earth and says, give them the victory. Give them a healing. Save their loved ones. Bless them financially. Do a work in their lives. Help them to be a witness. Do something miraculous. Heal their broken heart. It's the blood that's speaking for you. And He responds. He responds to the blood. Hebrews 11.4, he responds to the blood. By faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts. And through it, he being dead still speaks. Worship team. Watch this. Though you are dead, your blood speaks. Though you're incapable of response, the blood speaks. Though you're hurting beyond words, the blood. You're lying in a hospital bed and can't pray for yourself, but the blood speaks. The banker is knocking at the door, but the blood speaks. You've got to understand the power of the blood. We don't just, you know, I preached, was it last Sunday? I preached, about, you know, we, 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 we plead, we plead the 
blood. But you got to understand the mystery behind that, how powerful that is, and why that works. It's not just empty words. The life, your life, your victory. I've come to give you life, and that abundantly. It comes through his blood. These churches that don't want to preach about blood have lost their minds, if not their souls. The blood makes the difference. My God, I feel them in this place. Hallelujah. Listen, listen, listen. Just listen. The voice has a... Listen, the voice has a... I mean, the blood has a voice. Hey, my God, thank you, Jesus. Mm. When you, okay, if, if you're having throat issues or voice issues, would you just stand right now? I think God wants to make an example of you. <laughs> Anyone else? You got some kind of throat issues? Yeah. Yeah. There's healing right now. Put your hand right here under your throat.